Recently, I have been on TikTok and I've noticed that there is a huge problem going on with fetishization and interracial couples. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about fetishization, the disturbing trends I've been seeing, how interracial couples are portrayed in the media that we consume and what it says about our society, and a plethora of other topics. So if you're interested in that, keep on watching. Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to Ella Pastoral. And if this is your first time coming upon this channel, I typically talk about about the shows that I watch, the books that I read, and just overall talking about how the media we consume affects us. As you guys saw by the title and thumbnail of today's video, today we're gonna be talking about fetishization and how it relates to interracial couples. Okay, so before I really get into how fetishization is affecting how we see interracial couples, I have to give you guys a definition of what fetishization is. So I'm reading you guys this definition that I found from youthoutright.org, and it says, fetishization is the reduction of a person to aspects of their body, identity, or relationship structure. A person is found to be attractive solely due to these characteristics and could be exchanged with anyone else with the same characteristics. So now that you guys know the basic definition of what fetishization is, I want to give you guys some history on how fetishization has affected the United States of America. Fetishization is not a new concept at all. I would even go as far as to say that fetishization has been here since the beginning slash founding of the United States. We can see this fetishization blatantly with all of the disgusting stereotypes that surround women of color. We have the Jezebel stereotype for black women. We have the spicy Latina archetype for Latina women. We have the submissive and docile archetype for Asian women. And all of these archetypes slash stereotypes serve one purpose and one purpose only. All of these archetypes and stereotypes all serve to support white supremacy in one way, shape, or form. And they also serve to help push out the patriarchy and it's really, really sad because fetishization is super wrong because it reduces a person to a very one-dimensional view of what a person is. So instead of, let's say, viewing a Latina woman that you meet as a person with their own thoughts, background, and opinion, you're going to see them as a spicy Latina who's going to be feisty and you're just putting this negative stereotype onto a person without seeing them for who they truly are and that's problematic. And the reason why I even wanted to make this video in the first place is that I started to notice that a lot of people did not even know what fetishization was and if they did know what fetishization was, they really thought that it was a positive and a good thing when it's really not. What really showed me that people don't understand what fetishization is, is when I was doing my research for the video that I'm putting in the iCards right now, and I was just talking about the drama that was surrounding the game known as Era 143, and how a lot of people were accusing the creator of the game for fetishizing black men when she really wasn't. So I really wanted to come on and explain to you guys how damaging and harmful fetishization, true fetishization is. And I wanna read you guys an article explaining how dangerous fetishization can truly be. Okay guys, so the article that I wanna read you is by Rachel Ramirez, and it has to do with violence relating to the Second Amendment. And YouTube is being really strict on stuff relating to topics like this so i'm gonna have to censor myself heavily so forgive me for the censoring that i'm about to do so the article by rachel ramirez says for asian women the atlanta spa hit close to home when robert aaron long the white 21 year old man who was arrested on tuesday and charged with the of eight people, six of whom were Asian women, told the police he had a sex addiction and that the spa was temptation he wanted to eliminate. Many were also quick to know the intersections between racism, misogyny, and racial fetishization. The stumbles of the authorities and the media outlets in distinguishing spas from massage parlors, which the latter of which have a connotation of prostitution and sexualization, also showed that people were already viewing the case with certain tropes in mind without engaging in the vulnerable realities these workers face. Being fetishized is extremely harmful to BIPOC individuals and those of marginalized genders as well. So I really wanted to let you guys know how harmful being fetishized is by bringing some of my friends into this video to show you guys their experiences. So for me, I would say being fetishized has affected me as an Indian American a lot throughout my life. I mean, I was born here, but I looked really different from everybody at school growing up. So a lot of the guys would comment and say things like I was exotic and 
I could tell a lot of them only wanted to date me because I looked different and I was something different to try. As Vox's Li Zhao reported, Long's statements about his temptation speaks to the long-standing stereotypes about not just the businesses, but also the Asian American women who have been exoticized and fetishized as sexual partners as far back as the 1800s, Zhao writes. And despite the fact that we are literally in the 21st century, these harmful stereotypes are still affecting marginalized genders and overall BIPOC individuals to this day. Honestly, I do think I've been like really affected by fetishization, specifically because I'm an Asian woman. And like on top of that, I'm on like the chubbier slash like curvy side of it. Like I remember like the first time I ever like became sexualized for being Asian. Like, and that was like all the way back in middle school, like sixth, seventh grade. And it honestly was like a really weird experience just because like I would get sexualized specifically because I was um Asian like they'd make jokes about like um like what like the Japanese and like and it, it was really weird because I mean first of all I'm Filipino but second of all it, it was really weird um, sort of being connected to like that sort of culture and I was just like a child and like it it also was really weird because I do think that like me being Asian like I when my parents used to go to like the Y when I was younger um they'd bring me with them and I'd like have my school work and like older white men just felt so comfortable coming up to me and talking to me about how they're like how they have like Asian wives and how like oh what their favorite Filipino dishes or like what other Asian people they know and it it honestly is it was like really eye-opening like growing up and realizing like oh my god these men were like creeps because I mean it's not like it got better as I got older it just kind of like evolved into something that was like instead of me being related to something that was sexual it, it evolved into me being the sexual being itself but it isn't just asian women who are suffering at the hands of fetishization it is other races too according to the article what is fetishization and how does it contribute to racism by janice kasam asari one research study explored the colonial roots of fetishization of black women throughout history and found that black people's bodies were exotified by European colonialists upon entering the New World. When Europeans invaded different African countries, the fascination and fetishization of African women was common. Sarah Sarchi Bartman is a well-known example of this. Bartman was a South African woman who was made into an exhibition in the 1800s because of the size of her buttocks, which became a tourist attraction in Europe, where Bartman was put on display. The dehumanization of Black people during this time made it easier to justify enslavement and abuse. Black people's bodies during this time were hypersexualized, and to this day, remnants of this pervasive trope are still applied to Black people. And I literally cannot emphasize enough how harmful it is to be fetishized. And speaking from my experience as a curvier Black woman, people really see you as your body. They don't see you as a person. They don't see you as someone who has thoughts and opinions of their own. They literally see you as some type of commodity. And what is so harmful about being fetishized is that even if you try to not fit into stereotypes that people have about you, they are going to make you fit into those stereotypes in their head. Me and my friend, I'm not gonna include her name for privacy's sake, we are both bottom heavy and would be considered thick by, you know, the general standards of body types. And she gets it worse because she has a larger buttocks than me. And I've literally had experiences where she would tell me that dudes would come up to her and ask her to do weird sexual things with them. I remember she went to a gas station and this random dude came and asked her if she used sexual pleasure devices and that's how fetishization is affecting us in the real world like luckily nothing you know escalated from that situation but this is the harsh reality that we face you wouldn't go to a random stranger and ask them on the street about the kind of sexual things that they do in their most intimate times but because of the fact that we're fetishized and sexualized people think because of the fact that we're thick or whatever that they can speak to us any way that they want 
and that's not okay. When it comes to fetishization and these type of behaviors, I think it's important to mention how these feed into stereotypes of marginalized groups, such as black people, queer people, non-binary people, etc. And I think when it comes with these marginalized groups that are already oppressed and have to face a lot of hardships and barriers because of their identity, I think adding to these behaviors and stereotypes can be very harmful and needs to be treated with the respect that um, we deserve because we are humans after all. I don't necessarily think that fetish is always bad, like there can be good things that come out of it, but it definitely is important to acknowledge that a lot of the time these fetish behaviors and stereotypes are used to dehumanize people. Like as a black person, I find myself feeling fetished in different ways, such as people stereotyping me based on my behavior, based on my appearance, based on, you know, uh, stuff that can relate back to like blackface and menstruacy, such as like, wide mouths and large lips and big noses and that can feed into you know saying that a character in a show that's portrayed like that is cool or funny and you just want to continue watching them but they don't realize how offensive and insulting and demeaning those traits are and that's also something that's really interesting to note about fetishization is that it's not just limited to like erotic or sexual acts it can be in behavior which is something that i find very interesting like when you first hear fetishization you first think of like oh like sexualizing like gay people or queer people or lesbians um and just sexualizing them and just wanting to watch them um engage in these really taboo acts because it's something that you enjoy or you wanting to be a part of that yourself by not identifying with that community so there's a lot of different intersections with uh fetishization that i think is important to note as well and at the end of the day like even though these could be like fantasies for people um and these can be like you know, something to escape from their like hard or mundane lives. At the end of the day, we have to be conscious of how these messages are being portrayed, especially in our media. If you see something depicted in media all the time, constantly and constantly, it's gonna ingrain those messages that a company or show is showing and basically be like, oh, that's how gay people are. That's how black people are. That's how these people are and can feed into internalized um, marginalization and fetishization. Like you yourself as a part of the community can start feeding into these messages and fetishizing your own race, which we've seen with, um, we've seen with a few celebrities and you know, it's, it's very interesting. Um, and you know, I feel like that's also something to talk about like internal fetishization and especially with like you know the kardashians how you know they'll fetish black people black men in particular but um once they're like done with them and they just don't find it appealing they move on to the next thing because like at the end of the day it's not because they truly like love the person or they like really want them because they had a connection with them it's like oh i want them because it's a fetish. I want them because I want to add it to my like roster. I want to just experience it. It's like about the experience that they themselves can experience by not being a part of that identity or being a part of the black community. So I think that's like something interesting to point out is that like fetishization is like a form of, of escapism for people. But when applied to the real world, it, it, it's kind of hard to just say, oh, it's just a fetish or it's just a fantasy when it's impacting millions of people and their perception. So I think that is where it gets a little murky, but 
those are just my thoughts thank you for wanting my insight on this topic and can't wait to see the video my mutual ish Donna did a great video talking about how harmful the spicy latina trope affects latino women and i'm definitely going to put that in the i cards for you guys but when i tell you that being fetishized especially as a woman of color is harmful and it literally makes our lives so hard to live through I'm not, I'm not joking. So now that we know about fetishization and how harmful and damaging it can be to regular people and their regular people lives, I really want to talk about the disgusting and concerning trend that I started to notice on TikTok in terms of interracial couples and fetishization. According to the same article that I read to you guys before by Janice Gassam Asari titled, What is Fetishization and How Does It Contribute to Racism? It states here, it's important to know that even within an ethnic group or race, fetishization can still take place. But in communities of color, fetishization can look like the glorification of lighter skin, colorism, more Eurocentric features, futurism, as well as hair discrimination, texturism. A person wishing that their child was lighter skinned with light eyes is fetishization, just as stating a dating preference for lighter skinned women would be. Anyone who has listened to rap music to any extent will likely hear the fetishization of lighter skinned and non-black women in popular lyrics. But what has really caused my eyes to open up to see that there is a problem in terms of fetishization and interracial couples is the fact that interracial couples specifically are fetishizing themselves for likes, clicks, and views. Sexualism, colorism, and futurism are all rampant on TikTok and the examples that I'm about to show you guys are literally going to shock you. Hi guys, it is Editor Emma here and I am just going to be talking about the TikTok issues that I was discussing in the previous clip. The original clip mysteriously disappeared but the show must go on. So the first TikTok that I have for you guys has to do with this Pakistani Muslim woman whose white husband keeps calling her the sand and word during when they get intimate. And I really wanted to include this TikTok because I really feel like it encompasses my main issues with fetishization as it relates to interracial couples like this man has called her a slur a slur that is meant for black people which is double offensive seeing as he is a bigot towards black people and that isn't even an accurate slur to call her so this man has literally gone out of his way to make up a slur to call her when they are getting intimate and i really feel like this is feeding into the larger issue of fetishization because I just know for a fact that this man has just been waiting to call her that because you know like most Muslims wait until they are married to have sex so this man has been plotting on this young lady and the second TikTok I want to show you guys has to relate to how people will get into interracial relationships to benefit in one way shape or another like the quote that i read you guys from the article about how people have fetishization beliefs when it comes to their kids is so true because this lady literally says that she had a mexican baby just so she can always have access to mexico and i just believe that is a weird reason to have a child like if you're having children for reasons like this i'm begging you stop the next TikTok that i have for you guys is just proving the weirdness that comes with interracial couples because this girl right here is talking about how there needs to be more people reading interracial romance books because same race romance isn't satisfying and guys that's such a weird take that's such a weird take and i really feel like the original poster of the tiktok has some weird fetishization issues that i feel like she needs to talk about the next tiktok i have for you guys is just proof that people fetishize the mess out of people of color like this innocent girl is on tinder and look at the way she's being talked to like sis has a whole series of these weird comments that she gets and i just want y'all to know that it's, it's really tough to not be fetishized as a woman of color in these dating streets. And the next TikTok was one of the main reasons I even made this video because there are no words. I just want y'all to watch this, okay? You see how sis is literally fetishizing herself for clicks and views? I think at the time of me posting this, this TikTok is still up. And the fact that she said this was one of the wildest things I saw all of 2022 because no way bro no way 
and then the next tiktok that i have you guys <laughs> sorry i have a lot of tiktoks that i wanted to show you guys just proves that interracial couples know what they're doing they know that in order to get clicks and online clout that they have to fetishize themselves and it's crazy and so the next tiktok that i have for you guys is it just is something i like to call the snow bunny effect BBC, it's the BBC, that's the type of and if you guys don't know what a snow bunny is it is a term specifically used for a specific type of white woman who is obsessed with black men and fetishized black men and as you can see by the tiktok they are talking about ending their pure white bloodlines by getting with black men and that is such a weird thing to say because what do you mean by that like are you gonna stop having children when you get with black men? It gives real vibes. And I also found a very good Tumblr post that encompasses the issues with fetishization in relation to black people. And I'm putting it on the screen for you guys. But there was a recent trend on TikTok where white women, specifically snow bunnies, were literally referring to black men as BBC. And I don't even wanna explain to y'all like what that means because it gives me the ick. But black people are not your categories we're people like i don't i don't even know what to say guys like let's be serious Let, let's just be serious let's just be serious and the next tiktok that i have for you guys really shows that even if you are doing your due diligence and you're not fetishizing your partner or participating in problematic aspects for clicks and views there are going to be people who shame you for being in an interracial relationship and are literally going to dehumanize you Like, why would you ever message a random stranger this? And it really shows you that even if you yourself are not fetishizing you and your interracial partner, someone is. Someone. Someone is. Okay, so now that we've talked about how fetishization is going rampant on TikTok, I want to talk about fetishization in interracial couples as seen on TV and the other media that we consume. I asked my followers on Tumblr how they feel like fetishization has affected them. And this person right here brought up a very good point about how a lot of K-pop stands stands here y'all it don't be the fans it be the stands how they be fetishizing east asian men and i already did a video talking about k-pop and its problematic aspects so if you guys want to like a deep dive on that check out that video but i also want to talk about the other ways interracial couples are fetishized in the media that we consume while just watching and observing all of the recent things that have been released in terms of tv shows and even books i've noticed that there's a weird trend amongst interracial couples and this is the trend where almost every interracial couple that is portrayed in books and TV has a white person. And I'm just going to be putting the most popular interracial hashtags on the screen for you guys to see. And as you guys can see, all of these interracial hashtags involve at least one white person. And these are the most popular interracial couples. And I really want to talk about this trend that I've noticed because I really feel like it's leading into the fetishization problem that we have. When it comes to these interracial couples that are pushed in our media, they have to involve one white person. And I feel like this is playing into the fetishization problem that I've been talking about throughout this entire video. All of the most popular interracial couples that we see on TV have one white person. And y'all gonna y'all gonna come for me, but we can really see this in the show Bridgerton. Bridgerton is a great example of this with the couple Daphne and Simon and Anthony and Kate, as well as the show Never Have I Ever, with the main character Davy being in a love triangle with a white man and a Asian man. And I also noticed this in the show 911, which is Loki a cop propaganda show. But that's my show, so I really wanted to talk about the things that I was seeing in 911. All of the interracial couples in 911, like almost all of them, involve one white person in one way, shape, or another. And this isn't just a phenomenon that I'm seeing in TV shows, I'm noticing it in movies and books as well. And so, all of the major books that are pushed throughout Book Talk and Book Twitter or whatever, when they're interracial, they are an interracial relationship that involves a white person. Seriously, I want you guys to take a pause and think, what interracial couples can you guys think of that doesn't have a white person? Name a good five and you will struggle because they're hard to come by and that's because Hollywood has an agenda that they're pushing.
And obviously there is no problem with there being an interracial couple that has a white person in them. It's just that I'm noticing that in terms of representation, they're the only interracial couples that are pushed. It is so hard to find books that have interracial couples that don't have white people in them. And trust me, I have looked. And it's also so hard to find POC ex POCs in TV shows as well. And the reason why that we don't see a lot of this representation is because Hollywood and just the powers at B don't feel like people of color are marketable. And we know this because so many black authors, specifically on TikTok, will literally say that, hey, I'm not writing any books with main POC love interests because when I do, they don't get bought and I need to make money so I can feed myself and my children. And I just find that extremely concerning. And I really feel like the reason why these authors and these people who make these shows and TV shows do this is because they know that white people are a major demographic in this society. And so many times white people themselves will come out and say that they cannot relate to people of color. They need a white person in these relationships to relate to them. And I really feel like that's a damn shame because black people and other people of color are expected to, you know, sympathize and empathize with white characters and white people whenever they're in a piece of media because, you know, they're humans and we all share a human experience. But when it's flipped and it's people of color in these roles, white people will literally say that they can relate to us like we're not people. And I'm just gonna put on the screen for you guys the multiple instances where white people themselves say that they cannot relate to black people and POC characters. Oh look, books where I don't look like the main character and yet I still enjoy them. Funny how that works. And it's just crazy because people of color and black people too are humans. So the fact that you cannot relate to another person because they're not your skin tone says a lot about you. And that's why I really feel like we as an audience and we as consumers are so thirsty for interracial couples that have full on diversity. I think interracial representation needs a lot of work on TV, just in the way that it needs to come off as more natural now. Because I think in a lot of TV, the interracial relationships I see are very forced and it's very much emphasized that those couples are interracial and that's the focus of their relationship and especially in cartoons like I don't really see any interracial relationships like if you guys haven't watched Wakanda forever I don't know I don't know what's going on but Wakanda forever really gave us what we were missing like i know it's a problematic ship but seeing how the fandom around black panther and specifically wakanda forever i can really see that we as consumers are desperate for interracial couples that are fully diverse right because i was so shocked to see how many people shipped no more in surrey and i know that it's a problematic ship because reasons but the fact that so many people have come together and made fan art, made fanfic, made edits, really shows that we want interracial couples that are people of color from both, from both sides. And I really feel like in the future, we are going to see more interracial couples that are interracial, that don't include white people, because the market is super saturated with interracial couples that have white partners in them. And so, yeah, I really just, I'm glad I made this video. I've been thinking about this phenomenon for a while and I'm really glad that I was able to articulate my points in this video. I also want to thank everybody who was featured in this video. Your contributions and overall you guys being in my video really means a lot and I really hope that in the future we can also see more of y'all on my channel. If you guys like this video make sure that you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. I love having open dialogue with you guys and make sure that you hit the bell notification. The videos are coming, y'all, and I don't want you guys to miss out on an upload from me. So I'll definitely see you guys in the next one. Bye!